Okay, so last time we discussed reliability, which was uh, trying to reduce um, the failure incidents or the sensitivity of the constraints to variability. This time we're discussing robustness. We already introduced the idea last time, so mostly we'll discuss examples. But the idea was that uh, uh, we're now concerned about the objective and only concerned about both, but the objective we want to be less sensitive to the variability. So uh, let's consider a 1D example, um, I should say X. So imagine this is my 1D function, easy to optimize, right? Um, you know, here's the global minimum. But let's say now that X is not deterministic, there's some variability, right? You know, I'm gonna have manufacturing defects or whatever, um, weather changes. And so X is really, let's say, um, uh, let's say here's some value of X, and it's not just a deterministic quantity, but it's got some uncertainty associated with it. So it might give me this value at the middle, but it might give me, you know, with some probability, anything around it. Okay, so if I sampled around there and calculated uh, the expected value, the average performance I get under that variability, uh, for a small standard deviation, I get the line in red, which is overlapping the blue line, they look basically the same, right? In other words, the variability is really small, doesn't really change much. But as I increase that variability, you notice that my average performance starts to change. And as the variability gets higher, uh, the curve can shift significantly. Uh, in this last case, for example, uh, the global minimum is no longer here, but the robust design is over here. So the picture you might have in mind, and this is you know maybe not illustrating it as uh, as extremely, but uh, imagine you have this narrow but deep minimum, okay? And that's kind of what this one is. It's maybe not as extreme again, but it's it's narrow and deep. So if everything is deterministic, it's a really great design. You go down, uh, there's a really low minimum. But if there's some variability, if you're not certain you're going to get exactly that point, that it's going to vary, those sides are really steep. And so your performance is going to degrade significantly. It's not very robust. You're going to get lots of different solutions. Whereas maybe a point like this one over here, imagine a minimum that is broader, right? Even if they're under some variability, your performance doesn't vary as much. And so if we're now considering our average performance, so based on, it depends on how much variability I expect. If my variability is high, my average performance here doesn't change too much. But in this case, it was the same high variability. My performance is a lot of times, you know, pretty bad. And so here, this red line is my average performance. So on average, this design is better than this design, even though, uh, you know, there's potential. You know, the the, the deterministic mean or the deterministic value here is lower. So again, that varies. That's going to depend on how much variability I have. But again, the picture you keep in mind is that a design that is uh, maybe in this really narrow valley, really deep but narrow, um, may not be a good design under variability. So let's consider some other examples. Um, here's an airfoil example. Um, we're trying to minimize the drag of this shape. We're going to change the shape as a function of Mach number. And this shows a characteristic curve where at higher Mach numbers, the wave drag or the compressibility drag increases. You know, we get formation of shock waves and one drag. But let's say I want to fly out at these higher Mach numbers, 0.74. So I want to optimize uh, this airflow at Mach 0.74. If I do that, I get really low drag at the Mach number that I wanted, but it's not very robust, meaning that if I vary my Mach number, if I'm not right at Mach 0.74, uh, the drag can be high, much higher even potentially than I had before. So it's less sensitive, but this is what I asked for. I said, minimize the drag at 0.74. And if I know I'm always gonna fly right at 0.74, maybe that's great, but you know, maybe I don't know, there's gonna be some variability in my Mach number as the temperature changes, as my speed changes, um, you know, temperature affects the speed of sound. And, and so, uh, and then of course also I've got to accelerate, I'm going to have to move through some of these other Mach numbers, so this may not be such a good design. Instead, I could do something like this, where I optimize, uh, this is a simple case, where I optimize the average drag, let's say, across these four points. You could think of this as a, 
expected value. It is like an expected value where each one of these was weighted, you know, maybe according to some probability based on how often I would fly at those Mach numbers. Uh, but now this is more robust, right? We can see it's less sensitive to the variation in my drag. Um, let's do another example. Here's a probability density function, a PDF, for uh, the direction of wind at a given location. Notice this is very non-Gaussian, right? It's not even close to symmetric. It's periodic, of course, because it's uh, directions. Um, and we usually plot this on what's called the wind rows, just plotting it here on the compass. This is the same data, just plotting on, on a compass here. Uh, it allows us to more easily visualize that the wind predominantly comes from this west-southwest direction, uh, but there's also a significant probability of it coming from the south. And there's a finite probability that's going to come from any direction, but those are the most predominant. So if I was trying to design a wind farm, position some wind turbines, and I, I wasn't, I didn't want to consider uncertainty, I might say, well, let's optimize it for my most probable direction. Okay. So here's the picture of that. The wind is coming from that direction. And I'm changing the position of my wind turbines so that they stay within this boundary and they maximize their power production. So you can see they've kind of spread out and these are the wakes behind the wind turbine. The wakes are not interfering with one another and they're able to produce a lot of power. Well, if I go back, there's a big chance the wind could be coming from this direction. And if I took that same layout now, uh, the wind turbines can't move now. They can change their orientation. Uh, you know, they can pivot with this yaw axis. But now a lot of these turbines in the back are in the wakes of these turbines. And so this produces much less power. When they're in the wake, there's reduced velocity. And this, this, this wind farm doesn't produce very much power or as much power. So instead of treating this deterministically, I might say, let me uh, maximize the power produced or the expected value of the power produced, not this instantaneous power, but the average power I would get under this variability, considering the probability of being in all these directions. So this is an expected value. Uh, here's the layout that we get. Again, just shown for one direction at a time. Um, you can see they're nicely spread. Uh, little wake interaction, there is some, right? This one is in the wake of this. There's a compromise that had to be made so that it's also works well in other directions. Uh, I got the arrow there already. Um, as if it was coming from this direction here, they still stay well spread apart. Again, some interaction, but um, much less than before. So if I was to plot the performance versus all wind directions, the blue is when we considered a deterministic one direction case it gets really high performance, the highest we can get uh, for a predominant wind direction, but it really drops in some of these other directions significantly because we didn't consider that. Whereas this optimization under uncertainty, we're looking at our mean performance um, across all the directions and, and we're optimizing not uh, for a peak performance, but rather an average. And it's not just an average of what you see here, it's weighted by the probability of those directions. You know, it's weighted by this function here. So there's a lot of power here, right, where the wind is really probable. Uh, sorry, here's the red one. It doesn't get quite as much power as um, uh, the blue one does. That's the trade-off, right? We're not getting as much peak performance. But uh, overall, our average value increases. In fact, it increases, I think, by uh, something like 12% in this example, which is a lot we're talking about. you know. How much energy we could capture across a long time, 12% would be a lot. And this is a classic risk reward trade off. I have um, you know, less reward potentially for those uh, predominant wind directions, but I get more, more uh, average performance overall. So, kind of like the monopoly example I, I mentioned last time, if we knew for certain that you were going to land on this direction, I, I might take this really, or maybe you know, I didn't know for certain, but I wanted to be high risk. I could go all in, higher risk, high reward, or I could spread them out. Now, if I'm only going to do this once, you know, or a few times, maybe that may be worth it. But over the long run, if I'm going to play this game many times, the spread out strategy where I try to maximize my expected value is going to win more times. Uh, in this engineering context, right, uh, if maybe some days I can get more win, more power from this. But over the long run, as I consider the variability, I'm going to produce more energy in the long run from this uh, 
um, robust design. So um, there are many metrics one could use and every example we discussed uh, used um, uh, the same one, which was minimizing the mean value or the expected value, right? So I think all three examples, that's what we did. And that's a common one, right? Instead of minimizing this deterministic quantity, we want to minimize our expected value under this probability distribution. But there are other options, sorry. We could, this is less common, but we'll highlight some other options. We could minimize standard deviation of the variance. So uh, less common because this ignores the mean entirely. If you're saying we just want as little variability as possible. Um, sometimes it's maybe not the mean we care about, but uh, let's say the mean plus or minus some number of standard deviations. I want to make sure that some of these tails move down. Um, another one is to do a multi-objective trade-off. And this inherently captures that risk reward trade-off I was discussing. So maybe one objective is the mean and the other is the variance. And I'm gonna have some sort of Pareto front where this design um, has the best minimum in the mean, right? Really low mean, but high variability. Whereas this design on this extreme uh, sacrifices in the mean but has low variability. So this is my um, high reward, uh, high risk, high reward design. This is my low risk, low, low reward design. And I could consider a portfolio of options here, depending on uh, trade-offs in mean and variance. And as we've discussed, the character of this curve can really help dictate that design. I may not have to give up much potentially, in my mean and reduce my variability considerably. And that may be an attractive option. Um, related to number three, we don't have to consider just these uh, summary statistics like mean and variability. We can look at other things like uh, percentiles. So for example, we could go to the distribution, my PDF, and maybe I wanna look at say the 95th percentile. Uh, that would mean that 95% of the probability lies here, and I want to minimize where that occurs or maximize or whatever, depending on the problem. So in other words, maybe I want to ensure that 95% of the time my wind farm is going to produce at least this much power. Uh, another one might be something like, uh, uh, we call it a reliability metric. Probability that um, my objective oops, exceeds some threshold. Critical, let's call it crit, some critical value here that uh, I want to satisfy. Okay, and then there can be many others. There's no right answer here, right? It's gonna be very problem dependent. Um, what am I after? Trying to think about mean performance variations, some trade offs. Um, but in general, this idea that the deterministic quantity can give us designs that, if there is significant variability, can be very poor compared to. Uh, considering that uncertainty and trying to optimize for that directly. So uh, we will talk next time about um, how we compute some of these things like mean, standard deviation, or basically propagating uncertainties. We discussed one method last time, uh, sort of that first order perturbation method, but we'll discuss a few others. That'll be, we'll see you then.